Hello friends, welcome back to She's In Her Apron. Come along with me today as I share with you some yummy recipes my family has had for dinner. It was bad, it was really bad. Check out my She's In Her Apron planner. We have a shop your shelves section in there that can help you be organized and used up what's in your home. We have a section on meal planning for you. And in the weekly spread of the planner, there's a section for you to put your menu for the week in. That link to the planners are down below. The first dinner I wanna share with you is this yummy smothered slow cooker pork chop recipe. It's so good. Now, in the footage, I'm talking about making it into a freezer meal and seeing if I like it. Let's see if I did. All right, are you ready? Aprons on, let's go. This recipe is called slow cooker mushroom pork chops. The recipe calls for fresh mushrooms and I don't have any. So I do have canned mushrooms, pieces and stems that I keep on hand in our stockpile, our food storage. And of course, cream of mushroom and cream of chicken I have on hand. I don't have a ton of cream of chicken. I only keep a few cans on hand because it's something that we don't always go through and of course cream of mushroom. Black pepper, you'll need onions and garlic. This is from dizzybusyandhungry.com. She said you can freeze it, but we're gonna test this out. So I'm gonna bag up one and get one in the slow cooker. So I'm gonna need two cups of chopped onions at the bottom of my slow cooker. Okay, add your onions to the bottom of your slow cooker and then put your pork chops on top. These are bone-in chops and I have five I'm working with. Okay, in a bowl we're gonna combine our soups, mushroom, garlic, and pepper. I'm putting in more garlic than it calls for because yum. We'll give this a good mix. Okay, we're gonna put the mixture right on top. We're gonna cook on low for six to eight hours. And then we could serve it over either rice or noodles. So I decided not to chop up more onion. I'm gonna write on the bag, which I didn't before I put the pork chops on, um, just to add two cups of fresh onion at the bottom of the slow cooker. And we will try this out next week and see how we like it. Uh, for the record, do not freeze this recipe. It ends up coming out very watery, no good. Just don't make it a freezer meal, trust me. Let's get working on our side dish. And in my pantry, I have some jasmine rice and orzo. I'm gonna make a rice peel off, my kids love it. So I usually add onions and celery and mushrooms to my rice pilaf, but today we have enough onions in that sauce that I don't wanna add more. So I'm adding some celery, two stalks, and a zucchini. I'm doubling, so I'll have the original recipe down below. So I'm doubling this, so I'm putting a tablespoon of shortening and a tablespoon of butter. Then you add a cup of orzo, and you're going to brown this up so it's just lightly golden. Once that starts to turn brown, we're gonna add our rice and our chicken broth. We're gonna bring this to a boil, and once it gets to a boil, we're gonna put it on a simmer with the lid on for 20 minutes. Okay, when it's done, just fluff it up, and you are ready to go. So for a veggie, we haven't tried these yet. We got them from Costco and they are fire roasted Brussels sprouts with uncured bacon. And you can put them in the microwave. I'm sure they will be better in the oven, but with time's sake for tonight, we're gonna try these in the microwave. Wow, look at those. Without going through all the roasting process, they smell really good. So let's get this dished up on our plate and see how well it tastes. I am highly impressed. The Brussels sprouts were good. Few of my kids actually liked them. They're really good. And then the pork chop was nice and tender and it's so flavorful. And the rice pilaf was perfect for this. Okay, next we needed to eat up some drumsticks that I had and who doesn't love like crispy chicken? So I did our shake and bake chicken. I'm gonna do uh, half bread crumbs. This, these are plain bread crumbs and half uh, panko breadcrumbs. The only thing I measure in this 
is the breadcrumbs. I do like a cup of each here. Onion powder and all the spices, like anywhere from a tablespoon to a teaspoon. I don't know. I just put it in. That's probably a teaspoon of salt, black pepper, parsley, basil, oregano, a little bit of poultry seasoning, some seasoned salt, a tablespoon of garlic powder, and a little bit of sugar. And then last, some paprika, and I'm gonna do a whole tablespoon of that. I'm gonna shake them up, put them on my baking sheet with parchment paper, and good to go. And I have the skin on these chicken drumsticks because they are delicious. I did drizzle some olive oil on them. I do wanna find like a spritzer that I could spritz oil on. So they're going in the oven for 425 degrees. What I like to do is cook one side 20 minutes, flip them 20 minutes, and then see how they are at at that point. Okay, I'm gonna make a broccoli salad really quick, and I'm gonna rinse off what I need in my salad spinner. I'm just gonna chop these up, get them into like little bite sizes. Tonight's one of those nights where we're running around with our heads cut off, sports meetings, theater, tutoring. I'm just throwing dinner really quick together. I noticed that we're out of the pre-cooked bacon. I'm gonna hurry and cut this, some of this red onion up that I need and get this in here. I need to make the mayo mixture to put on top. So that way it has time to sit for a little while before we eat it. And while that's happening and the chicken's cooking, I'll just fry up a few pieces of bacon because this salad without bacon would be very sad. Okay, I'm gonna add this like salad topper and it's perfect for the salad because I need craisins. It has them in there, the dried cranberries and different types of like sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, it's perfect for the salad. So I don't have to go out and buy separate seeds or dry craisins. And then I'm gonna make the mayo mixture and combine it all. Since it's not a really big salad, I don't need a full cup. I did about three fourths cup. And then you need a half a cup of sugar. I don't even have that. You could use apple cider vinegar or uh, red wine vinegar. And tonight I'm using the red wine vinegar. We've used both. Love either one. Happy, happy. All right, I'm gonna give this a mix and then toss it in. This is one of our favorite salads. Derek absolutely loves this salad. Okay, I'm gonna pour this on, stir it all up, and get it in the fridge for a little bit so it could do its thing. And when you make this, at first you're like, I don't have enough dress dressing. The longer this sits, the runnier it'll get. So kind of like coleslaw. Okay, in our food storage room, I just keep a couple of these handy. I don't keep them handy all the time. Like, I never buy these unless it's the Spanish rice or Mexican rice that I will keep on hand when we do tacos and things like that. So this time I grabbed herb and butter. It's a rice and pasta bun. I'm gonna get this going and then we'll have that as our starch for tonight. Okay, salad's got the bacon. It's all mixed up. Now we're gonna dish up. Okay, here is the shake and bake chicken. Mmm, broccoli salad and the like herbed butter rice and pasta side. And that is our dinner tonight. Next is the, our yummy slow cooker country style ribs. These are so good. I have a few ways that I've shared with them over the years. I'll leave those videos linked below. I do have a video on how you can make these in your slow cooker with the rub. You can add barbecue sauce too if you want. This time I just did the rub. Smoked paprika, granulated onion, garlic powder, and salt and pepper. So good. So I cooked them on high for about four and a half hours. Okay, you could flavor the water with like lemon and garlic. I'm not doing that today. There is a cup of water in there. Pop on, make sure that's sent to seal. And I, I always forget, I think it's what I do is 15 minutes. It's always been between 10 and 15. So I'll do 15 today and I will work on the other side dishes as this cooks. 
Okay, for this meal, we're not going to do a starch. It's all veggies. So besides the artichokes, I'm gonna saute up that cabbage with some Baby Bella mushrooms, a zucchini, and I just realized I'm gonna add onion to this as well. I have a hot pan with some olive oil in it, and I'm just gonna get all of that in. This will shrink down. And so the seasonings that I'm gonna lightly dust on here are this truffle, parmesan, and black garlic seasoning. So some of that, this I got at Costco. I grabbed some vegetable seasoning. I love this stuff. So we're gonna put this on here. This, this garlic one has a kick, so I'm not gonna add pepper to it. Okay, I'm gonna let this cook down. It's gonna be so good. All right, so we have the country style rib and the sauteed cabbage with onions, mushrooms, and zucchini, and an artichoke cart. And I'm just gonna put a little dollop of mayo here, pull those apart, dip it in the mayo, mm, 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 and that is dinner tonight. Okay, next I shot my shelves and made, of course, one of my go-to staples for our family, and it's the shepherd's pie recipe. So we made dinner for a family in our church. I tripled the shepherd's pie recipe. So you're gonna see us make it for them and for us. Join me for some shepherd's pie. So I browned up the ground beef with the onions chopped up, added some garlic powder and salt and pepper to season the beef. So now I can add all my canned goods. For this, I'm tripling the recipe. So I'll need three cans of cut green beans, three cans of corn, and three cans of tomato soup. And I will be draining the green beans and the corn and just adding them in. I made some mashed potatoes in my Instapot. Super easy, just throw your cubed potatoes in. I don't even measure the water, I just put some water in there. Maybe a half a cup to three fourths a cup. Some salt and then I just mash them up when they're done. And boom, mashed potatoes. Get it on top and in the oven, 350 degrees for about 25 minutes until it's bubbly. In the meanwhile, I'm gonna make a salad. So I have some romaine lettuce and, and a bag of artisan lettuce. At Costco, I like to grab the salad topper. It has craisins and different seeds in there. It's so good. And for dessert, I whipped up a box of brownie mix for them. And then I had some rolls in our pantry and they get to have those as well. And we just packed up the food and Derek and I went out. I drove it over to our friend's home. All right, you're gonna get a bonus meal from me today. A roasted chicken with potatoes and carrots. I washed up some carrots and potatoes and now I'm just going to chop them up and get them at the bottom of a baking dish. I'm also gonna add some sliced onion and some chopped garlic. I'm gonna season up the vegetables with some crushed rosemary leaves, salt and pepper, and olive oil. The roasting tray I wanted to use wasn't available, so I'm just putting it in this really big casserole dish. So I'm gonna add the vegetables to the bottom and then the chicken on top. So I'm just trussing up my chicken and I stuffed the insides with just celery today. To season this bird, I am just rubbing butter on the inside of the chicken, the outside of the chicken, and then I'm going to lightly brush it with some olive oil and then hit it with some salt and pepper and poultry seasoning. It's going in the oven for 425 degrees for about 90 minutes, but it took a little bit longer. You want the inside temperature to be 165 degrees. It turned out really, really beautiful, but I think I'm gonna lower my oven for next time. The last time I did roasted chickens, I, I had it at a lower temperature, 325. 
I'm wondering with the potatoes and carrots next time, maybe I'll just do it at 375 degrees instead of 425. It was a beautiful bird. It was delicious. The veggies were so good. I steamed up a bag of broccoli and added some butter and salt and pepper to it. That was our dinner and it was delicious. We're gonna have dessert tonight. And these are the apple pie rolls from Costco. And they come with a caramel sauce. Spotted them when I was at Costco recently. And so this just looked too good. And especially dipping it in caramel sauce. Are you kidding me? So it comes in two packages. It's fully cooked. You just get it in the oven and crisp it up. It was delicious. All right, we're gonna enjoy our dessert and clean up the kitchen. Tonight was a yummy meal. Those are our meals that we've had over the length of time from January till now that I caught for you all. Um, if you like this and wanna see some more meals, um, cooking from my pantry, anything like that, just what are we eating, um, let me know. And I can try to film our meals so you could see them. I'm trying to be very intentional with that. So, all right, if you have a version of any of these recipes, of course, share in the comments below. I love seeing what you guys do. And if you would love some more meal planning uh, motivation, just click on the playlist here and the video that I have for you right here. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon. Bye.